Hey everybody, my name is Jay. And I'm Tracy, and together we lead the South Orange County Church. We want to welcome you to a very special edition yep. of our Connect video series uh, where we talk about something that happened in the Bible, something Jesus said or did, or something some of his followers said or did. Uh, and then we talk about it and we discuss it with one another. And we believe that by doing that, having that discussion and really letting it get deep in our hearts, that it can really bring peace to the chaos that can be our everyday lives. And one of our biggest convictions is that it's good to start the week getting together with other people to talk about God. And so that is exactly what we're doing today. We are actually in the church at Ladera Ranch. That's right. Because all over South Orange County, there are small groups meeting, one probably just within 10 minutes of you. Yep. So we're going to be introducing you to all of those groups over the next few weeks. And we thought we would start with the Ladera, which is our small group. So here they are. Everybody say hi. Hi. <laughs> but we always start with kickball, so that's how we're going to start. Today. That's right. So uh, let's get this party started. So welcome back. Um, kickball was awesome. It was awesome. And uh, God has determined who the winners were. <laughs> and uh, that, that's what we have to wrestle with and submit to every single week every when single we play week. kickball. So anyhow, um, so we, this is so much fun to be able just to gather together in the park and talk about this. Agreed. So um, so I wanted to kind of take us into a new discussion today. So last week we were talking about Acts chapter 3. Right, and we were talking about the healing when uh, Peter and John um, are, you know, they're leading the new church. They're kind of starting everything, and then they're like, "Okay, we're gonna, we got to go to the temple and pray." And these two buddies are walking up to the temple and pray. And then there's this guy sitting there. He's been blind for forty years. Uh, no, not blind. Uh, uh, different lame. guy, lame. Yeah, lame. He couldn't walk. He couldn't <laughs> walk for forty years. And um, uh, he's asking for money. And Peter says, "Hey, look at me." And then so he looks at him. 
And then he says, I don't have silver, I don't have gold, but what I have, I'm gonna give you. And he says, in the name of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. So the guy just gets up and starts walking, which is just absolutely amazing, right? And so there's so many cool things about that. And then all these people start running over to where he is uh, in, in the middle of the temple because they can't believe this guy that couldn't walk is now all of a sudden walking. Um, and he's jumping around and then Peter starts uh, talking to all of them. And as I was reading it these last couple of weeks, I realized that I have this image in my head of what Peter must have looked like when he was when he was preaching this message. I've always thought, you know, um, about kind of an older, grizzled, big gray beard, um, you know, really angry Peter type that 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 is preaching because the words in this message are really Spicy. it's fiery like yeah. it's super bold you know super. um and so i mean i kind of look at it like it must have been this older guy who's been doing this forever but like we said last week it's not he's really young he's just this guy that's you know all of a sudden he's right here he's leading this church and he's doing this thing and um and and but then the other thing that got me is that while he is trying to talk to everybody the guy who could not walk is all of a sudden jumping all around <laughs> and ha it says that he was holding on to peter and john <laughs> so i mean i'm I'm picturing even like, uh, you know how, you know, parents are holding their kids' hands when they walk and the kids are swinging back and forth. I'm picturing him like jumping up and down on, uh, you know, on their shoulders and, you know, kicking, doing, you know, clicking his heels together. Um, you know, as Peter's trying to talk to all these onlookers, yeah, this, this guy's like, I don't care what you're saying. I don't care who you're talking to. He's just jumping all around and going nuts, you know. Um, and uh, so I just... I love that idea. I love I love thinking about that. So I, I, as I read this passage, that that's kind of how I want you to picture it is Peter's, you know, trying to be serious, but he's saying some serious things. But he's also got this guy who's freaking out because all of a sudden he can walk, and which he, is. Yeah. And he's also just taking advantage of the moment because right. there's this like big stir that's created because this person is healed. This person that they they've all seen almost every single day. And he looks around and I think it's probably one of, for the first time realizing, whoa, I have this, I, I could heal this guy, but it's so all these people will listen. Like mm -hmm. the whole point was revealed to him at that moment. And so he's just taking advantage of this moment where everybody's gathering around going, you know, and then he basically says, oh, don't, don't be amazed. I mean, don't look at me. I didn't do this. This is the whole Jesus thing. Don't be, right. it's not me. And I just, I love the thought of that. Right. You know, but he's figuring it out as he goes and it's right. cool. Yeah. All right, so let me let, let me tell you what Peter said, Yeah. Uh, which I think is really cool. It's a good one. It says, while the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. And when Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness, we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant, Jesus. You handed him over to be killed and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. And we are witnesses of this. And by faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus's name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him as you can all see. Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders, but this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Messiah would suffer. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. Heaven must receive him until the time comes for God to restore everything as he promised long ago through his holy prophets. For Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me among your own people and you must listen to everything he tells you. Anyone who does not listen to him will be completely cut off from their people. Indeed, beginning with Samuel, all the prophets who've spoken have foretold these days and you are heirs of the prophets and of the covenant God made with your fathers. He said to Abraham, through your offspring, all peoples on earth will be blessed. And when God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. And I just, I love hearing this, this whole thought process that Peter's going through. I mean, cause this is some pretty intense stuff, right? He's like, you, you killed the author of life. 
you killed God. You you did it. You you killed him. Um, uh, but God brought him back to the, God brought him back to from the dead. There it is. I knew I could say it. God brought him back from the dead. So I mean, he's really going after them and saying this. But then there's all this other cool stuff that he's going into, and this idea he's like saying, yes, it got crazy, but then it doesn't have to stay that way. Not only did God bring back Jesus from the dead, but now you can repent and now you can have times of refreshing. Mm -hmm. Now you can enjoy this whole other kind of life. And then down, I love it at the bottom where he says uh, that he sent um, Jesus to bless us by turning us from our wicked ways. And what a great thing that is, that Jesus is going to bless us by turning us from our wicked ways. Right. Sometimes we think of blessings as Jesus is going to bless you by giving you all the great things that you want. Right. Jesus is going to bless you by making your life awesome. But here he's saying Jesus is going to bless you by turning you from your wicked ways. So the blessing comes from us changing. The blessing comes from our repentance. The refreshing is the blessing and it makes everything work in such a better way. So with that thought, I just kind of wanted to ask some of you guys, um, what do you think about that? This idea of repentance, because repentance can feel like, okay, man, this is that this is pretty. I, I don't know. Sometimes we use repentance in a kind of a, uh, a negative way. A negative way. Yeah, like it's a bad word. You know, like you got to repent. I don't know. Right. <laughs> I don't know what it's. I didn't say it right, but I don't know. I was wondering why do we have that image in our brain that you know, sort of repentance maybe is not a is, is a bad thing or something. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody have any thoughts on that? Okay. Yeah, I think for me, um, yeah, I, it definitely repentance has been a, a time you think it's something bad and I got to change it. But when I look at it and I say, okay, I was just, I was just really mean to my wife or harsh with my kids and I yelled at them or whatever. And then if I repent of that, uh, it does bring refreshing because I think freshman, I, I say, man, I, I felt bad been forgiven I've gone back and talked to my wife or the kids or you know whoever the gas station attendant or whatever <laughs> and and then I say okay that's why Jesus said I if I repent it'll, it'll be better after um, not always easy to do of course but it certainly is a good thing to do so awesome yeah thank you all right Barbie for me the hard thing about repentance is shame Mm, yes. Because I think it's a very human reaction is to feel that shame. And that's what's so amazing about Jesus is he never shamed anyone. Right. And yet it's our first spot to go to. To where right. like if I confess this, if I admit this, if I go there, I have to feel that shame. Mm. I have to ex be exposed to that. Yeah. And to me that is horrifying and horrific. So it's a big obstacle to overcome. Right. So how, how have you found that you can overcome that shame? Like what helps? Um, I think a lot of it is meeting people who've experienced something. Like you, I've found myself confessing to things to where I'm like, I'll say something. And then I realize the person next to me is like, oh yeah. And I'm like, oh. And it, it takes away from my shame. Right. Because I realize I'm not the only one walking in that hurt or in that darkness or right. in that sin you know right so yeah. when you hear someone else say i must admit i'm a coward and that i love it when someone else brings it up first i'm like yeah me too yeah. right but at the same time like it's just it's comforting to know and to feel safe with other people other women in particular like who also walk in that shame right Right. And I appreciate so much the honesty of others who publicly share their struggles and their walk. Right. Because then I'm like, oh, I can speak this. I can say this. Right. Because I'm not the only one who's going through it. Right. And it, it mitigates that shame. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. That's great. Michelle, did you have your hand up? I think um, sometimes it depends on how the message you need to repent comes to you. Mm. Like, you know, if, if my husband or one of my kids is being annoyed with me and you just need to repent, you know, then sometimes that can spark that feeling of um, just pride or anger. Right. You know, like, 
so do you, you know, like, <laughs> if you repented first, then it'd be easier for me to repent, right? right? So then, so that, that's a reaction that can come. And the other reaction is, is, you know, you're reading something, you know, in the Bible, you're hearing a lesson, and you, and it just convicts your heart, right? You right. Know, you but, you know, with that, it takes humility, because you have to admit you've done something wrong, and it doesn't feel good to feel bad about yourself. Right. And, you know, so you have to kind of sort through that stuff, and, you know, those are the things, I think, for me, that can get in the way of just, you know, getting humble, being open, and not caring what anybody thinks, and trusting, you know, that if I do that, then I can change, and then I can feel refreshed, instead of burdened, but it's, you know, those two things kind of, for me, kind of get away. I love it. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. All right, so um, how about this idea of, you know, blessing comes from turning from our bad decisions or turning from our bad habits. It says wicked ways, but sometimes we're, you know, that, that feels a little bit harsh. So let's let's say <laughs> that it's turning from your, uh, from your, your, your sinful ways, your negative habits. When you turn from something, that isn't good um have you ever experienced that when then you see a blessing that yeah. comes from that when, when you turn from something bad have you seen a blessing that comes from that yeah. i think the biggest thing that i feel like i've just been so grateful for is that is getting turned away from my self-focus i just can't think of how um I don't know how to explain it, but like, you know, before I was focusing on God, it was always, everything was about me. Everything's about my job, my life, my family, my husband, my stuff. And it's such a burden actually. And when you, it's kind of like you'd be set free from that when mm. you think, no, no, no. When you can pass everything by, it's not by what's going to make me happy, but like, how can I make God look good? Mm. I mean, it just sort of like frees your life. Because then every it changes all the motives for everything you do. I can't think of one single thing that hasn't been, you know, sort of um, relieved by that. Mm -hmm. I felt I feel relieved that, that the world is not about me. That sounds so terrible, but, but you don't have to. That's a burden, actually. Mm -hmm. It 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 weighs you down, and just focusing up and living for God through everything. It just I don't know makes it makes everything lighter mm -hmm. somehow. Mm -hmm. lighter, so yeah, that's good. Well, I think for me, uh, will be my uh, traditions and some things in my culture that don't let me um, embrace God's, you know, like war. Like in the beginning, like before being Christian, I was believing that um, in the way that uh, I was acting or still, you know, communicating my, my heart with everybody was the right way or still um you know putting like like the like priorities in my life wasn't the right way but no and then when i started to read the bible i i perceived that wow i was just building my life in sand <laughs> like mm. i don't like that and i was just walking in you know in like you not know, running to my ring and and with god i just i can found hope constantly you know and i can I repent constantly in the way that i'm thinking or perceiving the things. It's, for me, it's like a repentment is change the mind. Mm -hmm. It's just remove the the, the, in the things that I'm thinking and embrace God's um, word. And yeah, that change everything. Mm -hmm. Promise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it's great. Good. Julio. Yeah, I think, I think for me, um, you know, when I'm, when I was, when I'm focused on myself, thinking about things I want, um, you know, it just leads to anxiety. A lot of times you just get on this treadmill of wanting more and more and more, whatever it is. It could be a sport, it could be a job, a career, anything. And I know that when I when I recalibrate, it, it's a freeing feeling. I feel like I am I am doing what God wants. I am not self-focused. And I think it's just, I'm not built, I think hum, we're not built to, to be self-focused. And so we, we do that, it's, it's, it doesn't, doesn't work. Um, and so I feel a lot more free when I focus on what God wants for my life. You know, if I, if I can help somebody, you know, with a relationship with God or somebody overcome, uh, you know, a, a problem or anything like that, there is nothing that feels better when you come home from, from something like that versus, you know, running, you know, running a marathon or whatever else, whatever accomplishment, I always feel better when I help somebody else and do what God wants uh, versus what I want. So. Mm. That's really good. I love that. Yeah, Michelle. 
so um, one thing that I have to repent of often, um, sometimes every day, is just negative, faithless thinking. Mm. And, um, you know, if I grab hold of it and catch it, you know, then I can repent and go, okay, no, what, what's pure, what's noble, what's excellent, what's praiseworthy, I'm going to think about those things. And if I can actually change my mindset and focus on, hold on to those scriptures, it really does make a difference. I mean, the, the little bit of what Julia was talking about, it just lightens, lightens my heart, lightens my spirit. And I'm looking at what is and what's good versus what I'm not happy about or what I'm frustrated with. So yeah. I, I did that this morning, okay. by the way. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And it changed. I'm here. I'm happy. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's awesome. Great. Any other thoughts? Yeah, Marco. Whenever I do something wrong, which is often, <laughs> I already I immediately feel bad about myself. Like right in the moment, like you idiot, or you know you're wrong, or you know you just automatically just start sinking. And I think when I stop and take hold of it and repent and decide I need to get humble right now, or this pit's just going to get deeper. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't make everything all right right away but it does bring me back to just equilibrium and a sense of um, just a peace mm -hmm. and uh, hey this is going to work out don't need to worry about it take my humble pie right. and move on you know versus yeah. just digging a hole and then avoiding situations or stuff you know things like that so I'm grateful for that just that repentance I, I heard a quote I don't remember who it was from but I think Martin Luther, I don't remember, but all li all of life is repentance, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's so just true. so true. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's not just the big bad things, it's all of life. Right, right. So. I love that. Um, so, you know, I think the the idea here when he's, he's preaching this message to all of these people in the middle of the temple, right, and they all come running, and he's preaching this awesome message like man guys you messed up you killed the author of life but repentance is available yeah. blessing is available like it's all right here for us which is so cool yeah. and that this is the message of the early church right this is the message of the uh of, of the early apostles as the church was just starting and what a great message that is good news it's really, it's really great good news, news you know now meanwhile if you read on in chapter four the very next thing that happens is that the the chief priests and the temple guards come up and immediately arrest them and put them in prison right. so i mean you start thinking about like here was the first message from the early church to the world which is repentance brings refreshing and it's going to be awesome just trust jesus and it's going to be awesome and they got thrown in jail yeah. and uh you know so i mean that the world will always push back against this idea of turning from our wicked ways yeah. the world will always try to snuff that out and keep us from repenting whether it's mm -hmm. shame or whether it's fighting our negative thinking or whether it's just all the embarrassment of that the self-focus those things like this this is what um can keep us from the blessing that god has for us so mm -hmm. Um, I hope that all of you guys, as you are having your discussions, I hope you enjoyed our discussion today. Um, we yep. love this group. You guys are awesome. Thank you for, um, I, I tricked them into coming uh, to do this by promising tacos. And uh, we did deliver on the tacos though. We had a lot of tacos and we had a lot of fun. It was great. Um, uh, but I hope that your discussions are really great. And I hope to be introducing you to more small groups uh, in the weeks to come. So maybe we'll be at yours next week. So meanwhile, have a great discussion with your group. If you would like to find out more about our church, we would love to have you join one of our small groups. We meet like this. We meet in people's backyards. Uh, we meet just all over the place. It's probably anywhere in Orange County. You drive 10 to 15 minutes, you're gonna find one of our groups. Um, so if you wanna find out more about us, send us an email at socchurch at occhurchofchrist.com. That's socchurch at occhurchofchrist.com and we will get back to you right away. We're gonna have a great summer together and we're gonna have a really good time going through the book of Acts and looking at the, new, the, the early church. So it's gonna be awesome. So with that, uh, we wanna say have a great weekend and uh, we'll see you next time. Everybody say bye. bye.